David Kleiman here with the EMS Operations Division. Today we're going to be talking about narcotic boxes. We're going to go over the specifics of how to acquire a narcotic box, how to actually go through Operative IQ to acquire it, how to administer it, and for all those little what-ifs that happen. You know, if the box is broken, if you actually pop a seal, and you didn't need to use the narcotic after all. So we're going to go all through that today on the Operative IQ. So every morning what you're going to do is the paramedic will come in, he'll actually go and physically acquire all three narcotic boxes that is on your apparatus. So when you acquire those three narcotic boxes, you'll go back into wherever your computer is and you'll log into Operative IQ. As you're logging into Operative IQ, physically look at your box, make sure you have a blue seal that's present, I can see my red seal, and then look at all three of your narcotics. All you're visibly looking at here is, do I see the tag that says, oh, that one's Versed, that one's ketamine, that one's fentanyl. This is a picture of the narcotic that's actually inside your box. When you're looking at your medications, our EMS operations division will take this medication, they'll make sure it has the proper expir expiration, they'll make sure it's not been tampered with, it's not discolored, and then they put this separate tag on that goes specifically to each narcotic box. This tag is unique for Cobb County Fire Department. So when you're looking in your box, if you see the three different tags in there, you know your medication's in the proper expiration, it has not been tampered with, and there's no discoloration. They then seal it with a little tag that is specific to that narcotic box. So you don't have to worry about, is my medication expired? Is it discolored? Is the seal been tampered with? If you can see that little tag, then you know everything from the EMS operations side has made that a good narcotic box. All right, so I have actually taken all three narcotic boxes that I'm accepting. I've actually made sure I've got a good blue seal. I've actually seen the red seal in case I use my narcotics as shift. I've actually been able to look and visibly see the seal that goes along with the ketamine, the Versed, and the fentanyl. I've also got a spare needle and a MAD device. Once I look at that and I see that all three narcotic boxes are proper and I'm willing to physically take responsibility for those, I will go into the operative IQ. I'll actually put in my login, I'll actually do my password, and then I'm going to click the login button. This will bring you to your home screen. On your home screen are several different buttons. The ones that we're concerned with is narcotics. So we're going to go to narcotics. We're going to go to my control number. I am the oncoming paramedic. I'm going to then look for the offgoing paramedic. So I'm going to go and pick up from crew. I'm going to select the crew member that I'm picking the narcotics up from. The way it used to be is that when you put David Kleiman in there, you used to be able to push the little button right here called select. I used to be able to choose a station. Let's choose fire headquarters. And I used to have a select button right there and I'd be able to submit and I would actually be able to see all the narcotics that are under David Kleiman, but you're not physically looking at them. What the EMS operations division has taken out is that select button. So what you have to do now is you have to choose the crew member you're taking it from and right here where it says quick add control number you have to physically put in each narcotic box to say you have physically looked at that narcotic box and you are willing to take the responsibility for it. On the back is the unique identifier so it's TR01A2 I've got my station assignment. I would then hit submit, and that brings up the three narcotics. I would say those are the three that are unique to this box. I would check it and submit saying I am taking responsibility for those narcotics in that narcotic box. Realize you have to do this for all three boxes. If you're on a specialty team that has more than three boxes, you have to do it for five boxes. It is what it is. It's making you personally responsible for those narcotics. Then put in your seal number like you normally would. 1370468. Save. Now this brings up your login credentials once again saying you are physically taking responsibility for that. So you would put in your password and your PIN. 
Submit. So once you have put in your credentials, you're going to come up to the security verification. That is just a witness. The way the policy reads on your witnesses is, is you should have another paramedic witness that you have actually verified your three or nar narcotic boxes and that you're physically taking control of them. If there's no other paramedic in the station for whatever reason, let's say you're the only paramedic in Rescue 24 that day, you would then use your station officer. Even if the station officer is an EMT, it reads paramedic first, station officer, and then let's say you're on Rescue 24, the engine takes off on a caller for training and you have an EMT firefighter with you, the third person that can witness your medications that you have physically looked at them, you're physically taking control of them, will be a firefighter EMT. Paramedic preferably, station officer, then a firefighter. Once that person has put in their witness information, they hit submit, and now the narcotics are actually in your name. You can see who the narcotics were and who they are now. And then you can just OK. So now we're going to talk about how to, in Operative IQ, how to administer narcotics to a patient. So you're on scene of a patient who has broken legs. You decide that you're going to give fentanyl for pain management on that patient. So you're going to pull your narcotic box out of your bag. The EMS division actually has seals that are broken just a little bit that when you pull it, the seal comes off nice and easy. You don't have to worry about trying to get scissors in there, twisting it off, whatever. So now it's very simple to take that seal off. We're going to use the fentanyl on scene. We've administered, let's say, 50 micrograms to that patient. We've turned the patient over to Metro or Puckett EMS. So now we're going to talk about how to log the administration and the waste into Operative IQ. On scene, if you do not give that patient the other 50 micrograms of fentanyl, what you would do on scene is after the call is over with, you along with either another paramedic, station officer, or your EMT partner would witness you drawing the other 50 micrograms of fentanyl out. You would square it in the RX destroyer that is on every ALS apparatus. It should be in your jump bag. If you need additional ones, EMS operations can bring you them out. When you get back to the station, you would log back in, and then you would say what medication you administered. In this case, I would click fentanyl, I would click administer. And this will bring you up to your administration page. There's a couple key things that you have to do to be able to say that it's been given. The first thing you need to do is say how much you gave your fentanyl. If you decided in this case we gave that patient 50 micrograms, we would put 50. And if you notice, we still have to account for 50. If you gave more than one dose, you would put down the next dose. If not, you would go down to say how much you wasted. In this case, we gave 50. We wasted 50. And that brings us to this side. You need to put in your incident number. Remember, it's going to be CF, the year, the month, the date, and then that actual number that CAD gives. You would put the patient's last name in. And then you would say where you got the orders from, or if it's protocol you're going off of, it'd be Wellstar, Wellstar Kennestone Hospital. In parentheses, it says protocol. If it's under protocols, you just put Dr. Nix. If you get the orders from another hospital, you'd put the physician's name in. And this is the station of where you're getting the narcotics from. And for here, we would say fire headquarters. And then we would submit it. This brings you back to your security verification. You put in your password, your PIN, to say that you are the one that administered the medication. Once again, you're going to have the witness Usually it's your partner that's, that saw you give the medication or that officer on scene who says, yep, that medication was given. I saw him waste the medication. You would put in their information. And once that's submitted, 
that will bring you up to your confirmation page. I have administered fentanyl from your box number and it tells you where. Now, the next important part is how to reseal that box. So I've wasted my medication on scene in the RX destroyer. I've actually taken that vial and I've actually went and put it into the trash can, a red bio bag. I've actually properly disposed of my needle. needle. I would then go to the reseal box. So once my other medications are still in there, I would go to reseal the box. This is the part where people mess up all the time. If you notice, as you get it prepared, if you notice, the save button is very, very tiny. Look how big the without seal box is. Be super careful. Everybody in the field's been sealing the narcotics properly afterwards. They've actually been able to put the red seal on. They'll actually reseal their narcotic box correctly. They'll put the seal number in, 099. Seven nine two one, but where people are messing up is that without seal is on the far right. It's a bigger button than the tiny little save button. Be careful. I've witnessed it. I've resealed my narcotic box. I put my seal number in. The save is the tiny button. I would click save. And now it shows that I have properly resealed this box for the EMS Operations Division to come swap out at a later date. Click OK. Remember, when you're resealing your narcotic boxes to go back to the EMS Operations Division, the EMS Operations Division does not need an empty vial of the medication that you administer to a patient. This can go in a normal sharps container. They don't need the blue seals, they don't need the actual tag that came off of the Versed, they don't need any of the little trash that's in here. Dispose of your needles in the proper container, waste any medication in the RX destroyer, and this can all be put back in the trash. They need the medications that's been not used, properly sealed with the red seal. They do not need any of the trash. So a couple instances happen in the field, whether it's a broken box, we actually pop the vial of a medication to administer. We're going to show you how to document that properly in operative IQ. Let's say you're on scene of a seizure patient and you go to pull your narcotic boxes out of your bag and for whatever reason one of the bo boxes is actually crushed or it's actually been opened. No big deal, you have three boxes. You go to box number two, you take care of the seizure patient, you administer the medication, Afterwards, if you needed to, you would waste the medication. You would reseal that one just like we showed a minute ago. This is for that box one that you pull out and is actually damaged, whether the seal is damaged or the actual uh, box was damaged or the medication was damaged. Once you log back into operative IQ, what you would do for that damaged box is you would go to incident report, choose your control number, incident report, and that brings you up to this page. You see your three narcotics that are in that box that was for whatever reason damaged. And if you notice, there's several things here. It can be due to a broken blue seal. The case is broken. Let's say the seal and the case were fine, but when you opened it up, the vial was broken. And then the other things that you can choose is carpujet, missing box, missing medication, or cloudy discolored medication or other. So in this case, let's say it was a broken case or a broken seal. So you would click it, and then all it is is a simple narrative. Down here you would say, hey, got on scene of whatever call, case was discovered broken. Or let's say I opened up my bag because I had all the medications in a tiny compartment. Hey, the seal was broken. You would just, dis just write a small description. Hey, case was discovered broken. The seal was discovered broken on scene when I pulled it out. Or I opened up and the medication was actually broken. Once you do that, it's as simple as submitting it 
And then once that's submitted, you go back through your security verification saying that, yes, I witnessed that the case was broken, the seal was broken, the medication broke, something was wrong. And then your witness would put in his login information, and it's as simple as that, that that medication, that box was damaged for whatever reason. So once you've done your security verification, you submit it, that box is no longer in play. EMS Operations Division is aware of it, and they'll swap it out just like a one-to-one. -one. It's no big deal if it's a broken seal, a broken case, the vial medication. It's going through that system of saying, this is the narcotic box, the incident report, saying what you noticed, and a good, clear description saying what the incident was, whether it's a broken box, a broken seal, medication was broken, I pulled it out, we actually kneeled on it, whatever. It doesn't matter. That's the proper way that needs to be done as soon as you get back to the station and get to Operative IQ. So let's say you show up on scene, you have a patient who's actively seizing, you pull out your narcotic box, you break the seal, you pull out the versed, you actually pop the top of the versed. Let's say you even start to draw up the medication and the patient stops seizing and you decide, I'm not going to use the medication at that moment in time. First thing you need to do is finish taking care of your patient. Once the patient is taken care of and you turn the patient over to the ambulance provider, what you would do on scene is to take that medication, finish drawing up the medication as a waste, have your witness there to verify. In this case, let's say you're given the Versed, hey, I've, driven, I've drawn up five milligrams or one cc of Versed. You would waste it in the RX destroyer, properly dispose of your needle in the vial, get that box, go back to your station. Once you're back at the station, you're gonna treat it as an administration even though you didn't give it. So what you would do is go back, click the administration button once you log into Operative IQ, you're gonna choose the medication, go to click administration, and this will bring you to this on your administration. Here's my verse said that I was going to administer. I popped the top, but I did not give the medication. It's okay, I took care of my patient. What you would do in this incident is in your doses, you administered zero. I would put zero medication, and your waste is still staying at the proper amount that was in there originally. In this case, the verse said comes in five milligrams. I've done a dose of zero. I've done a dose of zero. The medication waste is five. You had a witness on scene that witnessed you draw up five milligrams or one cc of the medication and properly disposed of it. There's your proper amount of waste. You would then come over and do it exactly like you would on your normal patient. I would put in my incident number. Remember once again, it's CF, year, month, day, and your case number. Put in your patient's last name. Once again, where did you receive the orders from? If it's protocols, it's gonna be Kenistone. You're gonna put in that physician's name that you received the order from. If not, it's gonna be Dr. Nix. You're gonna choose the station that the narcotics are coming from. And then you're gonna submit. It gives you a chance to say, yes, I'm doing the appropriate thing. I did not administer anything to my patient. I'm wasting a full vial. This is saying, this is your, hey, are you sure you want to do this? And this is your moment in time to say, no, 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 I actually gave two milligrams. Nope, nope, I have confirmed that I popped the top, but I did not give the patient medication. You click OK, and it goes back to your security verification. Once again, your narcotic box is going to be properly sealed. You're going to go back through. You're going to put in your security verification. You're going to put in your witnesses login information. There's been me administering zero, but wasting five. When you reseal the box, 
once again, I want to point out the save is in between the back and the without seal. The save is small. Make sure once you put that proper red seal in, you click the save. If you put the red seal in without a seal, in the system, it's showing that it's sealed without it. So make sure you pay attention to that. So now we're going to talk about two different little scenarios here, but they have the same, they fall under the same policy. So let's say you're the only paramedic at Rescue 24 and you have to go home uh, sick or you just have to suddenly leave. If there's not another paramedic to take control of your narcotics, it falls under the same policy as I'm the off-going paramedic and there is no paramedic coming on shift. When you look under the handling, use, and waste of controlled substance policy is section 7.4. So under the policy it says there, if there's no paramedic to assume responsibility for the controlled substance, either that paramedic had to leave and go home and there wasn't a paramedic at his station to take control, or if I'm the off-going paramedic, there is no oncoming paramedic then the first thing that needs to be done is the battalion chiefs whose shift it is shall be notified immediately. So I have that station officer, if I'm the off-going paramedic and there's no oncoming paramedic, I would ask that station officer to, control, to contact his battalion chief. Once he contacts his battalion chief, the battalion chief has to do the following actions. He needs to float a paramedic to the station within two hours. If a paramedic's not available, in the battalion, the battalion sh chief shall request a paramedic from an another battalion. If there's no paramedics available in the county, then the battalion chief will have to have a paramedic assigned from another ALS station. So let's say I'm rescue 24, I go home sick, battalion chief is notified, there's no other paramedic at 24. If he cannot find another medic to float in, and he cannot get another paramedic from anywhere else in the other battalions to help him out, he would have Rescue 26 come to Station 24 and they will physically take control of Rescue 24's narcotics. Then, and here's the big thing, those three extra narcotic boxes have got to stay on that apparatus locked up. They cannot be stored at the station or in the station's locker anywhere. They have to stay physically in that rescue or that ALS engine's physical control. If there's no other ALS apparatuses available in the county or he can't find anybody to take control, the battalion chief shall notify the appropriate per person in accordance with paragraph E3. That is the EMS operations division and then those narcotics have got to go back to headquarters to be put back in the system. They cannot stay at a station that was normally ALS and turned into BLS. Float a paramedic. If not, you ask the other battalions. If not, then the other ALS stations will physically take control. If all else fails, EMS division is notified the narcotics are brought back to headquarters to be put back into the system. If you have any further questions or need additional training, contact the EMS Operations Division who will happily come out to help you.